Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we talk about men's style, self-development and personal improvement. And today, well, it's a subject which is so very important to men. It's footwear, shoes, an expensive part of your wardrobe for sure. And I've built up quite a large collection of shoes over the last, well, couple of decades really, since I've been personally interested in making a good impression in the way that I dress. However, I'm acutely aware that many men don't have the desire to curate a large collection of shoes. Also, that you may not have the money to put aside to buy shoes or the time to research on eBay or other you know, sites where you can get shoes quite inexpensively, which is actually where I get most of mine. But in order to help you, I thought I would break down all of the shoes which I own, if I, had, if I could only choose three pairs of shoes to take me through my life's journey, these are the three pairs of shoes that I would own and they're why I would own them. So let's get started. Well, first of all, I'm going to talk about the shoe that you should buy to take care of all those dressy situations in your life. And it should come as no surprise to any of you chaps out there, you gentlemen, that the shoe I will select for this purpose is, of course, the Black Capto Oxford, or the Black Oxford shoe. Now, the reason I've picked this is this is the one shoe which will cover you for most of those big events in the course of your life. It'll be good for the job interviews that you need to go to. You can wear this on your wedding day. You can wear this on the important days in the office where you have to meet the chief of staff or where you have to uh, give a presentation to your co-workers. And you know what? You can even be buried in this shoe or wear it to somebody else's funeral as well. Such is the versatility of the black cap to Oxford. Now, I've just picked a standard black cap to Oxford with a, with a leather sole. Um, you may think that a day-night sole might be more practical in the long run if this is a shoe which is going to form part of just a three-shoe collection. Because if you buy a composite or day-night sole, you can wear it through the winter months with a bit more confidence. And if you're going to wear this shoe day-to-day, -day, because, you know, this is a fantastic shoe for work if you wear a suit of any colour. The black cap to Oxford has got you covered in that regard. Um, a day night so might be a bit more practical if you're walking a great deal or if you intend to wear it throughout the winter. In fact, I've got this in a, in a, in a day night sole and in a leather sole for the slightly more formal situations, but this shoe is the sort of jack of all trades when it comes to dress situations. You can even wear this with a tuxedo or a black tie if the situation dictates, if you've got nothing else. Uh, as long as you can bring the toe cap up to a mirror shine, you know, you're pretty good for everything. So this is just that go-to shoe. Now buy carefully because because it is such an eponymous shoe, every shoe manufacturer makes a black cap to Oxford. In fact, I made a whole video on uh, black cap to Oxford shoes and the buying process and what you should and shouldn't look for. But um, because every manufacturer makes them, there is scope for you to make a mistake. Also, there is scope for you to shop around. So once you've decided on what sort of shoe you're interested in, leather sole, day night sole, do some shopping, look around the manufacturers. There are different price points depending on how much money is in your wallet. But pick carefully, invest as much as you can because this shoe has the potential to be with you for years, if not decades, if looked after right. And it'll be that classic cornerstone of your gents dress wardrobe. You won't go far wrong with a black Capto Oxford. Well, now that we've covered the dress shoe requirements of your wardrobe, I'm now thinking second tier down, what do you wear for those informal occasions which are a little bit more dressy than perhaps, I don't know, a, a casual sneaker or a training shoe? Well, for me, the brown shoe is a really good place to start, but not just any old brown shoe. I'm a really big fan of either the brown brogue or in the, as I'm holding here, the semi-brogue. Because the broguing gives that shoe a little bit more informality and allows it for me to be worn in a host of different situations. Which perhaps if you just went for a brown Oxford shoe, a bit like your black one, um, lends itself to be more formal. The broguing allows you to wear this shoe in a whole host of situations. In fact, in reality, it's a real chameleon of a shoe. Because you can wear this with your 
grey suit. If you've got a lighter grey suit, perhaps anything lighter than a charcoal, or you can wear it with your navy blue suit. You can wear it with chinos. You can wear it if you're wearing a, a navy blazer with, with uh, grey slacks, for instance, flannels or whatever. The brown shoe is perfectly acceptable in those situations. But of course, in a dress down situation, it's ideal to be worn with just chinos and a shirt if you're, you know, just kicking around on a casual day. And you know what? In a pinch, if you really had to, you could pair this with a pair of smart denim jeans uh, or perhaps any other casual trouser you can think of, you know, in chinos and all that, all the different colours of chinos, they pretty much all will fare quite well with your brown shoe. And when you add the broguing as well, it allows you to wear it in somewhat more informal situations. And I think the broguing, I mean, I like brogue shoes anyway. Um, I could just as easily have said a full brown brogue here, but I've gone for the semi brogue because I think that just gives it a bit more flexibility. Um, but the brown, the beauty of brown is it goes on a journey with you as the owner. So black is black, it's always going to be black. Brown, it changes with the passing of time, particularly as you add different coats of polish. You can alter the patina of your brown shoe by adding darker brown to it or lighter brown. If you've got a walnut colored shoe, a light brown, uh, you know, you can keep it that light color by just using a neutral polish, or you can darken it, of course, by using a mid or dark brown. So you've got lots of scope. And in this case, in this particular shoe, you can see that I've kind of patinaed the toe cap to give the shoe a bit of a more of a vintage or museum look. Um, but just as easily, I could have kept it as a light walnut color. So the shoe is much more flexible. And I think the word chameleon really covers this shoe. Very practical, very useful, and a good second shoe to have in your three shoe minimalist collection. Well, we've talked about the dress situations. We've talked about the informal situations. What about everything else? What can we pick which can actually bridge that huge category of, you know, life as you know it when it's not formal and semi-formal? Well, for me, I've selected that jack of all boots, the chucker boot. Um, very simple boot, actually made of two pieces of leather normally, no more than two or three eyelets for the laces and ankle height. And in this case, I've selected a chini boot, which is uh, coupled with a day night sole because this is the most versatile of boots that you can have. It will take you on any terrain. It will take you on pretty much any situation. And it's a great pair of boots to have as the cornerstone for your general wardrobe, if you think about it. You can wear this boot in uh, informal situations wearing denim. So pretty much any color of denim will go well with a brown chucker boot. And particularly in this case, this has got quite a grained leather appearance. So adding to another element of informality allows it to be worn across many more broader areas of use. It's also uh, quite good in the uh, in the semi-formal stakes, so you can easily pair this with chinos of pretty much any colour as well. Um, so very practical, very usable, and you know what? In a pinch, you can wear this boot with a suit because you know it's got a low-profile boot. It's not particularly chunky. It can be easily worn, you know, with a pair of trousers um, coming to a normal break, and it will allow you to wear this with, say, a grey suit or a navy blue suit because of that sort of mid-brown colour, very, very flexible. Uh, and of course, you know, you just wouldn't know that it was a boot anyway when you've got a pair of trousers on. So it's a very practical pair of footwear, ideal in the winter. It gives you that extra protection, that little bit of ankle height, and coupled with a day-night sole, which I would always have on a pair of boots if I possibly could. You know, it gives you that traction in the winter and the protection from the cold, and it makes the boot that much more longer lasting and practical in a whole host of different situations. So, you know, that is my, the boot which I actually have as a cornerstone boot in my wardrobe. This particular pair of boots I've owned for over seven years now. It's still on its first day-night sole and it is still, you know, steaming on like a, like a train. It's a fantastic pair of boots. I wear this probably my, my uh, most commonly worn pair of boots in the winter time and uh, still looks great all these years on and uh, a, an ideal boot to have as that third pair in a three pair of shoes minimalist collection. So in my minimalist three pair collection, that's what I would have. 
but a couple of honourable mentions because it was actually really difficult to pare it down to just three pairs of shoes. Uh, the black cap toe, Oxford, I mean, you know, you can't really touch that. It's ideal, the versatile shoe. But instead of the brown, I did actually think about going for a burgundy colour shoe here. I love burgundy. In fact, when I look across my shoe collection, I've probably got more pairs of burgundy shoes than anything else. But I prefer if I'm going to have just three pairs, the brown, because of the journey that the brown goes on whilst it's in your ownership. You can take the, the colour in different directions. You know, if you can, you can bring it up to a mirror shine if you want it to be a more formal pair. You can leave it in a sort of distressed, unpolished look if you want it to be your informal pair of shoes. So there's a lot of options with the brown, which are not quite there with the burgundy, but I almost considered the burgundy. And when it comes to the boot, well, I've chosen a sort of grained leather uh, checker boot, but I also considered a brogue dress boot for this uh, position because actually I tend to wear a lot of brogue dress, dress boots in the winter and uh, I'm a really big fan of them because, again, they're very broadly wearable across a wide spectrum of other clothing. But when it came down to it, you know, it was the chaka boot that won out and that made it into my top three for my three pair minimalist shoe collection. Now you may totally disagree with what I've said today and you may have your own views. Of course, I've stuck to leather shoes here. I could easily have talked about uh, desert boots uh, in suede or different um, ma materials, but I stuck to leather because if these were the three pairs of shoes that I was going to go on the rest of my life journey with, I would want leather because leather is my preferred material for footwear. I really love it. I love the way it allows my feet to perspire and breathe normally. You can't be beaten in my opinion. But if you've taken a contrary view to what I've delivered here for you today, let me know in the comments section below. And when you're there, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well. That way you won't miss any of the future material that we prepare for you here at the Chaps Guide. So until the next time we meet, take care of yourselves. I hope with your three pair minimalist shoe collection of your own choice. And we'll meet again very soon. Until then, Take care.